Hi everyone, Angie Woods with Dog Psychology 101. Today we're covering a really serious subject, separation anxiety in our dogs. It's a really big problem and it can be really difficult to get past. If you're new to our channel, please be sure to drop us a like and hit the subscribe button below. You'll be the first in line to receive our new videos. Rather than get past, I want you to think of the word management because there is no real cure for it, but there is a way of making it better. Number one, how do we know that our dog even has separation anxiety? A lot of dogs have anxiety, but what is separation anxiety? So when we think about separation anxiety, in nature, and you know I'm all about natural dog behavior, which is what we practice, so when would a dog ever separate from their pack naturally? So going back to the street dogs that I love to talk so much about, domestic street dogs, when they live together, they're always together. But when you live with people, which is you know why we actually helped create, or we did create domestic dogs, when you live with people, you have to learn how to separate. And separation is not normal. So it's really hard and then we people act like people and it tends to feed the problem. We have a hard time honoring the dog and really understanding what's going on on the inside of the little brain. So when a dog is left alone, the normal um, feelings that they should have is waiting. And so if you ever notice you come home from a long day at work and uh, your dog runs to the water bowl before they do anything else, maybe besides jumping on you, watch the greeting video, um, they run to the water bowl and they start to drink right away. And it's because they've been waiting on you. Part waiting is what a dog should be doing when you're gone, not panicking. And we're gonna get really deep into this so you can understand how can we help them feel better. So how do you know if your dog has separation anxiety? Well, there's some behaviors that they exhibit that only occur when you're away. And for some people, they're able to see these behaviors when they're even thinking about leaving. The dog starts to get upset and wound up and it tends to grow until you walk out the door and then we're in a full-fledged panic attack. So does your dog start to show signs of anxiety when you think about leaving? Or you pick up your keys or you put on your jacket or your shoes or any of these type things. If you're a traveler or a business traveler and have to travel regularly, your suitcase may be associated with you leaving as well when you dig it out and um, they start to have these anxious feelings. So the first thing I would say would be take note of these things. Dogs who are anxious do a few things that are um, very specific. Again, it's only when you're away. They pee, they poop, they vomit, they become destructive. So if you have a door that's been destroyed because the dog is trying to get to you, they don't understand you're not on the other side completely. So they're just trying to get to you and they're trying to find you. It's a full-fledged panic. This is why the destruction happens. So we have to learn to prepare our dogs to be alone. It's not normal. We have to teach them how to be normal in our world. So I thought a really good place to start today with you would be to teach you why they have separation anxiety. When you learn to understand it, you'll know better how to treat it. So separation anxiety is caused from your separation, of course, but why do they feel that way? And so I use the word mindset in my teachings a lot because mindset means, or my definition of it in this scenario would mean, how does your dog see you in their pack and family and pack remember are the same we just call them different we all live in a group so how does your dog see you does your dog follow you around all the time incessantly like really being on you you can't go pee without your dog how does your dog see you does your dog see you as the parent in the relationship or does your dog see you as the child in the relationship because if you think about that dynamic it makes more sense to people because we throw around this dominance or leadership and word around a lot and I think people misuse it and they see it as a negative thing but if you think of your parent uh, as a parent and a child relationship it's exactly what it should be you wouldn't let your kid follow you around constantly all day you wouldn't let your kid now let's say that we're beyond infanthood and very small toddlerhood you wouldn't let them drive you crazy and be on your heels all day well, it's the same thing for a dog and think about why would they be following you all day if your dog feels like they need to keep tabs on you, if they feel like they are responsible for you, 
they're going to be anxious when you leave. It's just Mother Nature. Followers cannot lead leaders. Leaders can lead followers. And so if your dog has a mindset of the parent in the relationship, they're going to be nervous when you leave. So how do we change these type things? Well, I should back up. I should digress very quickly because there's a few other things that also go along with it I should mention. There's something I call pack drive. Um, some dogs have higher drive for things than others. Pack drive means I need to be in a group. I need to be around others. Some people are social extroverts and some people are introverts and they don't care to be so social. Dogs are the same way. And some dogs must have other dogs. If you have a high pack drive, you need to be in a group. The other part is, is were you born this way a bit? Or many people may feel like they caused this type of problem. And inadvertently we may add to it, but many times a dog is already born with an anxiety component to them. And then if you couple that type of dog analogy with um, a very high pack drive, then you kind of have this perfect storm of things that can really come about. And then on top of all of that, the mindset is upside down. So now you have a nervous, naturally nervous, anxious dog who is in charge of this family. He must keep up with you. We create a lot of excitement coming in the door as well, as well as creating excitement going out of the door. Oh my God, I won't be gone long, I promise. Here, have this drink, I'll be right back. All of this comes together to help create separation anxiety. It's not a blanket problem or a syndrome. It is not a blanket statement and there's not a blanket cure. It actually takes a lot of time and effort and patience in order to help your dog who's suffering from anxiety. But remember the word suffer because it's really horrible. If you think about the feelings that they're having in the crate or behind the door when you're gone. And through changing the way that we live with our dogs, not obedience commands, not making them stay in the same spot all the time, but really providing leadership. So at the core of the problem, the mindset is repaired. And then we can really begin to make true progress in what we want to see, a happy dog. It comes through rules and structure and being the parent. So let's get started with some hands-on. How do we do that? So very first thing that we want to address is what you address first. So what is the very first tiny symptom you see of your dog going to have a reaction? Can you see them think about it? Can you see those feelings inside? Because the better you get at that, the better you get at correcting that very first feeling, the better we're gonna do. So you have to interrupt their patterns. You have to interrupt their thoughts. So the very first feeling might be, whoo, and you go to put your shoes on. As soon as you see that, you need to jump in and give your dog some direction. You don't have to overcorrect them, but you need to let them know what is it you want them to do at this moment. So not reacting to you. And then one of the big feelings that I have in my heart when I'm thinking about these kind of things is, it's not your business because is it their business? And we have to let them know that I want to take this pressure away from you. I don't want you to worry about me anymore. That's my responsibility. Remember, I'm the parent. After you begin to notice the very first thought or symptom, you have to jump in and interrupt that thought. So the first thing I like to do is body block. Okay. We can move left, right, frontwards, backwards, but we need to block them and let them know that we're serious. Get that wife or daddy look going on. Okay. Be serious and stop them and don't take no for an answer, make it happen. Many times they'll kind of corner themselves or something. Remember, you're not mad, you're not angry, you gotta be emotionally fit. In order to teach an animal, you can't be angry, they just see you as crazy. Kids do too, they learn to tune you out. So quiet, calm, and block. Now, once they've stopped the behavior, you need to direct them. It's not enough just to block, you have to direct. So that's when I ask them to go get on their bed or go to their place or go somewhere that makes them comfortable. It might even be the crate. And so if they're not having crate issues, this is an awesome option. That tiny little direction of blocking them before I come to the door, sending them back to their bed or a special area and having them calm down before I walk away. Having this talk with them like, whoa, wait. Can you see how we stay? If you're a wife, you know how to do this to your husband, All right? Treat your dog like your husband and everything will be okay. okay. <laughs> then we back away. It's a big secret. So as strange as it may seem, as funny as it may sound, 
giving your dogs some rules, some boundaries, and telling them what it is that you want. Remember, we're telling not through words, we're telling through vibe, through energy, through your body language, through pointing, and through your desire, what they want. And it's really all about making these guys happy. So we have to give up a little bit of our mama cuddles, daddy cuddles, sometimes initially, to make them happy. Take the weight off the shoulders, right? So I have a recipe that I have been super successful with with my clients in order to work on this problem. So like I mentioned, we have to prepare your dog every morning, or if you're a nocturnal worker, um, before you leave the house, before we're gonna leave them alone. So the first thing I like to do is do the exercise, mental and physical, right, the walk. Then when we come back, we're gonna cool down and uh, drink water and just let them chill out for a little while. Maybe while you go get ready for work, maybe you go take your shower and have your breakfast, etc. cetera. Um, then, we're gonna feed them. We're gonna feed them a nice meal. So naturally, we have a nice tired dog and then we feed them. They're gonna go into digestion and they are ready for you to leave. Everything about the situation should be easier, more dull, and just more amenable, more, um, more simple to deal with. And then we can get on with our techniques and baby stepping our way through things. Remember, this takes work. It's not magic. It's a uh, it's literally learning how to see the thought and starting there and building on the time and graduating. Secret sauce, but not magic fairy dust. So many problems, whether it be anxiousness, nervousness, fearfulness, and aggression are all fed by adrenaline. And when they're starting to get excited, what we're experiencing is a spike in their adrenaline. It's beginning to rise. And if we throw a block in that, it can't rise any further. And now their body has to digest it that's when we start seeing things like shaking and shivering. I know that you are not gonna do anything to hurt your dog. That's why you're watching this video. You wanna help them. So know that you're not hurting your dog. It's just adrenaline leaving their system and there's no way to avoid it. Haven't you ever been scared or startled? You vibrate for a little bit and then it goes away. So you have to build on things slowly and surely, but bit by bit, Compounding, it really adds up and it makes a huge difference. But start slow and then build your time. So once you have them back on the bed and then you can make your way to the door, maybe you get three seconds of being on the other side of the door before, they're, before they start vocalizing again and making noise. Then you open the door, you come back in and we put them back in their spot. We have to learn to build on that time. Just like you can't run a marathon in a day, you had to train for that. Well, you need to train your dog's brain um, to be patient and wait. How did you prepare your dog for the day? How did you prepare your dog to be left alone? Have we gotten rid of the energy that's all built up inside, all that mental and physical energy? Just like you, like I don't lift dogs above my head all day when I'm working. I come home mentally exhausted because I've been teaching you guys all day and working with dogs all day, but I haven't been picking them up and lifting them per se. So. Mental work and physical work is going to help prepare them to be alone. If you don't express the energy in a healthy way, they're going to find a really unhealthy way to express it. Vocalizing, peeing, pooping, more anxiety, more barking, more destruction. I've been in people's houses that the dogs have done twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 in damage to the house in really short order. So on top of it being miserable for your dog and for you, it can be quite costly. So we're gonna slow things down. It takes commitment, it takes time, but I wanna teach you how to think about the baby steps. I can't give you every scenario. Everybody's life is different, every dog is different, but if you learn how to see the baby steps, you can grow and graduate, be progressive, and be the leader your dog always dreamed you would be. So if you have a young dog or a dog that is destructive, then a crate may be a great option. But the crate is just a barrier if the dog doesn't feel well in it. So we can't have a dog who's feeling anxious and being in the crate and hurting themselves there either. So it's really important that we make the crate more like a den and not a cage. Now, what's the difference you say? Back to mindset. So dogs are den animals by nature. You know, if you leave them alone, little dogs down through the Bahamas that we see so much, like Tiki, my 5K, um, when you're out trapping them, you're gonna see these dens that they dig. It's pretty cool. Okay, uh, go lay down, lay down. Thank you. Okay. There again, this is an opportunity to teach a little patience to Brick. Um, I didn't ask him to get up and come into my space. Dogs should not be allowed in your space without your invitation. 
It's a very basic tenet of doghood. If you have any dominance at all, the dog should not be in your space. And you see, I didn't have to be harmful to do that, but you see how he's waiting. Waiting is part of mental exercise. Yeah. So this is how we do it. Open the door. I ask my dog to hop in. I use the phrase hop in. You can say whatever you like. Brick, hop in. Brick, hop in. Now, if I have a dog that has a crate issue, uh, you're nervous about the crate, or anxious about the crate, I'm not gonna close the door right away. That's what makes it a cage. We're having negative feelings. Maybe we have some adrenaline in our system and then bam, we have, have you come in throw you in, close you in, or trick you with a treat. Uh, rewarding with a treat, absolutely fine, as long as we're calm, but not tricking them. I never trick anybody. I'm not gonna fool you to do one thing and then do another. So, in the crate, and relax, and you see how he's standing. Now, he has zero issues in a crate, typically, but if we're really wanting to practice with a dog who is anxious in the crate, then I'm gonna wait for him to lay down, which might mean you know, I need to practice and take the time that it takes. So I, if I wanted to practice this exercise, I might just get my computer, check my email, relax for a while. He'll only stand for so long. This is where our patience and persistence kick in. So he'll only stand for so long. Once he relaxes and I can see that he feels good, then we'll close the crate. I might close the crate two or three, four seconds, reopen the crate. We wanna keep him feeling good about the crate without excitement. I should mention, excitement and happiness are two totally separate things. But to the human brain, excitement looks like happiness. Excitement many times is just adrenaline. It has nothing to do with your uh, happy soul or anything else. It just means that we're excited. And so in this case, it would be bad. Um, don't bring excitement to cases that should be calm. There's lots and lots of situations in the world that should be calm. Coming and going from the house Remember, coming and going from the house should not be excitable moments. It should be very, very calm. And this is how we can really help our friends. He's thinking about laying down now. Yeah. So you have to wait. And in order to make this very familiar to them, we need to practice this exercise regularly. Isn't that awesome? Look at that happy feeling. Yeah. So if I were working with a dog with crate issues, this is when I'd close the door. Now, let's say that we had a dog that popped right up as soon as we closed the door. I would probably open the door right away. I would wait until I closed the door and we're laying down. And then I would probably build on this by leaving the door closed as long as they're laying down when I'm near them. And just to teach you how to think about this, um, when I get total relaxation, being at zero, while they're doing this, for you set the goal, X amount of minutes, then the next stage for me would be to stand up and walk across the room while they stay relaxed and come back and to graduate from just out of sight and come back, remembering not to say good boy or good girl, not to bring excited, to stay calm and confident and relaxed. If they stay laying down and are relaxed, we could provide a treat here, but do not treat an excited, anxious dog. Whatever you love, we get more of. We're looking for a relaxed, happy pup. So I thought while we're here at the crate, I would touch on how to deal with your dog when you come back home, because so many dogs, that separation of time, regardless of if it's a very short time or a long time, um, causes a heightened excitement and a heightened reaction for most dogs. So it's really important letting them out of the crate the right way too, because if you let them out in an excited fashion, they're again associating the coming in, the going with excitement, and the excitement feeds adrenaline, and the adrenaline feeds your dog's anxiety. So, what I do, number one, I probably would come in, put my things down, take off my shoes, and really just spend a few moments um, being quiet myself. If my dog is going crazy, which I expect dogs to do in the beginning, they've never practiced this before, uh, you can walk over to the crate and let them know, mm, stop doing that. And then when they calm down, remember, true calm. Calm is not putting your bed on the ground. You can give them a treat. Or better yet, remember, praise comes in many forms. You get to get out of the crate. So it's not always a treat. Sometimes it's getting out of the crate, smelling the human, going outside, going for a walk. Praise comes in many forms. So I'm gonna let Brick out. Notice we're not gonna say good boy. We're not gonna say hi, Brick. I'm not gonna pet him when he comes out. I'm just gonna be really neutral. Neutral is a great word for this. And, uh, let him outside to go potty.
He should come out in a calm fashion. If he did not, I would block him and let him know that I want him to be calm. Brick's a very sensitive boy, so he's very compliant and submissive. And then we would just make our way to the door and go outside. So wrap it up, everyone. This is a really deep problem. It takes a lot of finesse, a lot of knowledge, maybe the help of a professional to help you see the little small things. If you're not a trained eye, it takes a little while to see these things, but this is a good way to get you jump started, get you well on your way to having a happier dog and a happier family. And of course, leave us comments and questions in the bottom, down in the comments, hit the like button, be sure to subscribe if you're not already because we want to help you have a better dog life. Tune in.